Hi, I'm Lily, and you're watching the Corvette Channel. Hi, everybody. Today we're going to be showing you how to install Corvo racing seats in a C5 Corvette. We're getting started here. Uh, Corvo, they sent the, uh, the box uh, over to Dan, and I went over earlier uh, with the Escalade, picked him up from him, his house, and brought him over. So uh, he's just not going to be able to fit those seats and his original seats in the C5. So he's going to go ahead and start pulling these out, and um, we'll see what we get. Hopefully they come out exactly the way we want them to. We've got two seats in here, and ah, they have one right on top of the other. Very cool. They do come very well wrapped. This is where it gets a little bit confusing with the C5 Corvette is you're actually going to mount the driver's side seat on the passenger side and the passenger side seat on the driver's side. They don't fit with the, um, the stock seat belts in place. So that's why you have to swap them left or right. Okay, otherwise they're the same? Yes. So obviously with the uh, color of the car and the color scheme of the car, I went with the uh, red seats. And with the red, it worked out perfectly because it has uh, black inlays and black accents, which works perfectly for the car. Like I said, they do really wrap these well. Very impressed with the way they're wrapped. And there we go. All right, look at that. Dan, go ahead and take it away and show us what you got going on. All right, so first of all, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to adjust the seat to get to each set of bolts, the front and the back. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna run the seat back. Now we can get to the front bolts, and there's a little pin right here that you, I mean, you should be able to grab it with your fingernails and just pull it straight out. Now once you pull this pin out, then just take the cover, and it slides right off. Okay. And same thing for this side. And then, you have a 15 millimeter uh, nut in all four corners. Uh, now we have to run the seat forward and you'll see two more 15 millimeter nuts here.
getting the seats out is going to be the easy part. <laughs> that definitely is going to be the easy part. Um, since I've got new rails for the uh, Corba seats, um, we're going to have to bolt the seats to the rails and get everything all set up. Um, later on, you're going to see we're going to have to make some uh, modifications to the brackets, possibly. But uh, we'll get into that once we're done with this. So now I'm going to... Let's take the seat back just a little bit. Because what we need to do. So now the seat is completely free to lift up. But underneath the seat. You can have an electrical connection right here. They have to unplug. See if I can get you the light and a flash and a hole. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, if you I'm can hold that just for the seat. So you're just going to take this little plug apart here. Yep. All it is, just press the tab in back or right here, and then it'll just disconnect. Okay. And now the seat is completely free and ready to be taken out. The one last thing is the way Chevy has done the uh, seat belt um, indicator is if that connection is unplugged, then it thinks that the seat belt is clipped in. So you will not get the seat belt warning light just because that electrical connection is disconnected. Okay, so it will default to it showing the light out and that the seat is is it uh, strapped. Will it will default to thinking that the seat belt is connected. Yes. Okay. So you um, won't get a light on the dash anymore. Yeah. Because the new uh, brackets are not powered. They're manual. So there's no power connection to them whatsoever. So Right. Luckily after doing this, we won't see the seat belt indicator 24/7 when we're driving. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do to pull the seat out, we wanna give us as much room as possible. So just take the steering wheel, move it up to its fullest position. If you have a telescoping steering wheel, it'd be best to suck it all the way in. Now that it's locked forward, we can, if you have a sport seat like this, you can use that as a handhold. And it'll come right out. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is to uh, mount the brackets and mount the harness, uh, the harness brackets, we have to use a bolt extender. Um, and these are quite a bit beefier than the size of the bolt that's stock in the car. So we're gonna have to widen these holes out on the seat rail, as well as on the harness brackets. Okay. So what I've got is I've got a step drill set up here um, and I should just be able to punch through and all four of these holes and the four holes here and hopefully we should be good. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to um, drill out these oblong slots here because obviously this bolt extender just isn't going to fit through it. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of center this up and then we're going to mark 
on here where the holes can be roughly. I'm gonna try and drill it out a little bit so that I have a little bit of wiggle room, but we need a rough mark on there at least so we can see where we should be drilling. All right, so what we need to do is we need to be able to get this hole enlarged. Um, just drilling it straight wouldn't work because it's just gonna pull the drill bit straight through, you know, with the teeth catching in that groove. So we're gonna try and uh, start just by rocking the drill back and forth get something started there and hopefully we should be able to uh, drill through All right, so next what we need to do is we need to take the uh, female side of the seat belt off the stock frame. Uh, for that, it's just an 18 millimeter nut right here. And then this will end up bolting back onto the new seat rails. And there we go. Here's some uh, brackets for the five point harness. Um, again, if you're not doing a five point harness in your car, you're not gonna have this extra step to go through. Um, you would just be bolting the seat back into the car. Exactly. Right. Okay. But I am gonna be doing a five point. Currently I've got a four point harness. I'm waiting for the five point to come in. The new five point is a clip in. So that's why I've got the eye bolts. Um, this old one, was a bolt in. So okay. until the new five point comes in, I'm gonna be bolting this in. Okay. And it's just a matter of. So now these brackets actually go onto, they go onto the, the floor existing car bolts um, first. And then the, the seat rails actually sit on top of these brackets here, correct? Yes, except for these are actually gonna sit on top of the bolt extenders. Okay. And we'll see that here in just a minute, guys. Enough uh, play for the ratchet. <laughs> And right now, that's just me with my OCD. I'm trying to get the uh, eyeball fairly level. Yeah. Now, there's two ways that you can do the uh, back seat brackets. Um, they can either go through eyeballs here, um, or in my case, I've got a harness bar already in there. So I will not be using these holes. I will not be using these eye bolts. Okay. The back Here's bracket. what the uh, lap belt portion looks like installed in here. Now what we need to do is we're going to tighten down all these bolt extensions. Um, after a lot of test fitting and everything like that, we're pretty happy with 
where things looking so kind of tighten everything down inside the car for now and these are a hefty nut um, it's inch and a sixteenth so one and one sixteenth inch and all we're gonna do is just tighten them down And then with the seat out, you can actually see why the C5 Corvette is so hard to find seats for. Um, you know, you think of it as being a wide car, you've got a big cockpit, but the thing is, this comes out so far, and then you got the uh, tunnel right here. This really is a very, very narrow opening here. Um, Surprisingly, it's actually smaller than what well, you have in a Miata. So it's hard to find seats that will actually fit into a Corvette. One of the few that does and does reliably is the uh, Corvo A4s, which is what we're putting in. All right, so now we have those all bolted in or all tightened down. Um, now it's a matter of put the seat rail onto the seat. And then we can bolt the seat in, bolt the uh, harness brackets in, and then we should be pretty close to done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bolt the seat in place. Um, because of the fact that we're getting rid of all the mechanical um, features of the stock seats, all the electric features, you won't be able to have a tilt or anything for adjustment. Um, one little trick that you can do for that is just shim the um, seat frame with washers. On the track? Yeah. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to put the screw in first. I'm going to go with the four washers. Uh, did a little bit of test fitting off camera. And that seemed to work pretty well, so. Now, like I said, what I'm doing is just the front. I'm not gonna be shimming the back. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me just a little bit of a tilt up on the seat. Uh, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Your seat's just going to sit just a little bit flatter. Um, again, it's all personal preference point at that point. All I'm doing right now is just um, setting the bolts in there, getting them screwed most of the way down, but I'm not tightening anything up yet until once we've gotten all four bolts in, got them in place exactly where we want them, and then I'll tighten everything down. Okay. Alright, there we go. That's all bolted down. The next step is to put the uh, female side of the seatbelt clip back on. And you'll see that there's a little notch here. And all we're going to do is just place that right against the metal bar here.
And the reason why we're put, even bothering to put this back on is for daily driving, you don't, uh, you obviously don't need a five point harness. And in some cases it can actually count against you if you've got a five point harness on. Um, <laughs> Get pulled over there going, oh, you were set up to race. Exactly. <laughs> if you're sitting there and doing a little bit of spirited driving and they see it's a Corvette and they see you wearing a five point harness, then you, they're gonna try and throw the book at you saying you, that you're set up, you're prepared for racing, you know, it's yep. just something that you don't necessarily want the hassle of. Right. So that's why I'm putting the regular seatbelt in as well. In order for the seatbelt bracket to uh, fit, there was a nice uh, plastic protective cover over this whole assembly. We had to take that off so that this bracket here would be able to slide all the way back. We could have cut it, but Considering the fact that this will not be seen at all inside the car. This goes right up against the tunnel. You're not going to see it We just opted to take it off um, the other thing that we're going to be doing is right here in the um, Seat reclining lever we're going to drill a small hole and that way we can install Just a little pull tab. It's just going to sit up like this and that way it'll be easier for the driver to get in there and be able to recline the seat. The seat bolt's going to sit like this right on top of the retractor. Um, so we're going to draw our hole back just a little bit so that the seat bolt can still sit in the right place and we're still going to have room for the retractor. Alright, so basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, key ring. And you're just feeding that through the hole we just, just drilled? Just feeding it through the hole okay. that we drilled, yeah. So again, guys, what this is all about is because of the tight clearances of the seat in the, in the C5, He's got to be able to have a handle to, we had to flip the seats from the left to the right or passenger side to the driver and vice versa. So this handle would normally be next to the door, but because of the the uh, seat belt retractor, um, there is no room. So this ends up being right next to the tunnel. So in order to be able to have, be able to retract the seat, he's got to be able to have a little bit of a, um, a handle or a little hook to be able to pull on to be able to get the handle um, up and out of the way so he can he can actually lift it up so now he'll be able to use it like that and be able to pull up on the handle so this and... will be able to just sit right here when I'm driving not a big deal right and there we go so that gives me a little pull tab just to be able to pull the uh, seat retractor all right so next we're ready to install the seat but first of all we need to put our brackets in so this here is going to be for the five point harness once it comes in and the way it mounts is it actually mounts with this uh, D tongue right here to the back, um, not going to the front, but to the back. That's going to allow it to come right up through the uh, fifth slot in the uh, uh, seat cushion. If it's If it's mounted the other way, um, then it'd be coming up over the front of the seat and that's not what you want to have happen. You want to go through that uh, slot that's actually in the seat. And then, so we can see there's the back, the back half of the harnesses that he already had installed. Yeah, so again, if you, um, if you don't have a harness bar, then these two harnesses would go in into these two holes. Okay. But with me having the harness bar, that's a better place for them to mount. Okay, so we finally got the brackets in place and we're going to go ahead and getting the seat put in now. 
this is just simply setting setting the tracks on top of those brackets because we use the same bolts just fell right in place. Yep. All right, so we're going to move the seat all day forward. Move the seat up. And then we should be able to get to the bolts. Well, we've got the seat in place. And so you can see that he's got the washer and the nut down there. Uh, just snugged up by hand but you can see it's very very deep down in there and very tight clearance so he's having to use a very long uh, extension on a ratchet so he's got one done and then we've got to pull I'll pull all that stuff out of the way and you can put the other washer and nut in place. There we go. And the back bolts are done. So now at that point, he's going to be able to move the seat, move the seat back, and then he'll be able to get to the front bolts. We're going to see if we can get in here so you can see it. And now these front ones are in very, very tight place we basically have to come at it from a little bit of an angle because of the way the brackets are but we do have a good enough bite on that nut that we should be completely good to go Let's see if i can show you that guys just how much clearance you have there's not a lot there yeah, so when this nut is, or when the socket is on the nut properly, it's coming in here, so there's not really room for the uh, extension. So that's why we have to go at an angle, but like I said, we are getting a good enough bite on that nut that we can secure the whole thing down. Guys, we want to. We definitely want to show. He's got it here now, but I definitely want to show you that, or or tell you that this isn't a problem putting these seats in if you're not using a racing harness. If you're just pulling the original factory seats out and you're just going to do a remove and replace, then you're not going to have all these issues. Um, you do have to. You do have to reverse the seat. You have to use the passenger side and the driver side, so the seat belt will fit. But other than that you don't have all of these issues. I mean, when you start to customize these things like, like Dan is doing in this car, um, you're going to run into those things. So I, I don't want you guys to be afraid of what you're seeing here. Um, I just want you to know that this is part of it. If you're going to be, you know, you know going to be tracking the car and you want to put the, the, these really nice harnesses on with these wonderful, these are beautiful seats. Um, but if you're going to go through all that to do it, then just be aware that it's just going to take you some time and you're going to have to engineer it um, because it's they're, they're doing their very best to be able to make these brackets work. And um, and for the most part, it, it works really well. Um, it's just that it's very, very tight clearances. So, you know, like I said, just don't be afraid of it. Expect to take some time to work on it and you'll get it. Yeah, without the five-point harness, um, you wouldn't need the bolt extenders. 
uh, without the bolt extenders you want to enlarge the holes or anything like that. The only thing that you may have to do is drill out the holes in the actual seat frame just a little bit. Um, they weren't quite perfect, but you'd be drilling out one hole. Right. And then it should fit absolutely fine right. at the most two holes. But yeah, it's because of putting in the whole five point harness and everything. That's why we had to make all the modifications to the seat frames, to the uh, five point harness rails. And that's why we had to put the uh, bolt extenders in there. But yeah, all in all, it really isn't that bad. It's just everything that we're doing to the car has made it much more of a challenge. Dan's starting on the second side, on the passenger side, and for the sake of filming this, the, there's no difference between the passenger side and the driver's side. So instead of instead of filming all of that and have you watch that over again, um, we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna come back into the video once we've got this this new seat put in, and then that way we can show you uh, what they look like after they're installed. Okay, so now that we've got all four bolts uh, taken out. What we're gonna do is, just so you know we're all on the up and up and everything, we're gonna time lapse the uh, rest of this. Just so you can see that we are doing it and everything, uh, but it'll speed up the viewing for you. So Dan's got everything all put together on this one. He's getting ready to put it back in the car. And... Obviously the one difference between that side and this side is we've got the five point harness bracket set up on that side. We're not doing it on this side. The reason for that is so that you could see how, see the difference between having the harness brackets in there and not having the harness brackets in there. So if, when you decide to do it, you don't want to have the harness brackets, you'll see how it bolts in. If you are doing the harness brackets, you'll see how that bolts in. Okay. So after this video is done, then he will complete, he'll pull the seat back out and he'll go ahead and put the bracket in. But this was just for informational and be able to, for you guys to be able to see both ways of installing it. He's just tightening the, putting the bolts on and tightening them down. And at that point, we're done. He's got the, the recliner piece in place, as you can see. You can see over here that he's just tightening up the nuts there. Yeah, just doing them hand tightening for right now till they're all in place and then uh, get them all the way tight once everything's all lined up. So again, the use of a real long extension for the back is going to come in extremely handy. Those our backs are tightened up. Now he's, got, he's, he's working on the front bolts here. And if you remember earlier in the video when we were doing the front, front bolts on the uh, on the driver's side that had the uh, the harness brackets on there, 
There was literally no room, literally no room at all. You couldn't see these bolts. You kind of had to see them, go look at them at an angle from underneath. Um, as you can see here, there's quite a bit of clearance. So um, in comparison to the other side, you can see both sides, you know, you can get to them pretty, pretty easily in comparison. So again, uh, you know, if you're not doing the five point harness and you're just doing a seat change out, you're not going to have as much issue putting them in. So it'll be a lot easier. All right, guys. Well, this is what it should look like. So we got it all adjusted. He's strapped in there pretty darn tight. Yep. So I got a chance to sit in the seat for a minute and man, those things really do hold you in place. It is amazing. So yep. if you're looking to track your car, you need to get a set of these for your C5. We really want to thank Mike over at TPS Motorsports in San Jose. Uh, Scott will be putting all the information down at the bottom of the screen here. Um, the, his phone number, his web address. Um, but without sponsors like that, we can't make these videos uh, happen for you guys. Um, so we cannot thank uh, TPS Motorsports and especially Mike over there who made this all happen. Uh, we can't thank them enough. Um, hopefully you found this video informative. Um, if you're interested in putting seats in your C5, I hope you feel a little bit more comfortable and you know exactly what all is going to be required of it. And stay tuned for more projects for our Project C5. channel. Don't forget to hit like on the video and make sure you subscribe.